On today's show, Daryl and I continue to go a little bit deeper into our game planning process, with today being about in-game, real-time data. Hey guys, welcome back to Strategic Baseball Podcast. Jeff Rotmeyer and Daryl Coulter here. Today's show, we're going to talk, we're going to go, we're going to continue to go a little bit deeper into our game planning process. The last episode, uh, if you didn't catch that, was about our pregame data set. So go back and check that out. And then on today's show, we're going to go a little bit deeper into the in-game real-time data. Okay, guys. So every week, it seems like we get at least one email from a coach or an instructor who want to have a, a deeper conversation with how they can apply what we are talking about and the the uh, strategic advantage baseball process into what they are doing with their team and with their players. So we really enjoy these conversations. So if you are one of the people who are interested in discussing, you know, how we're doing what we're doing and how to implement a, a this strategic mindset with your players, feel free to reach out to me at Jeff, G-E-O-F-F, at athletic-mission.com. All right, Daryl, let's, uh, let's kick this off. And for those of you guys that are listening, um, if you guys are on that mailing list, go ahead and download that takeaway sheet. And uh, if you are not and you want to be on that mailing list, head over to strategic-baseball.com, submit your email, and we'll get you in on that weekly email that we send out every Friday as we air the show. All right, Daryl, so on, um, on today's show, we're talking about real-time data I'm going to let you kick it off. Yeah, man. I think this is the cool part because as we talked about last week and we went through kind of the pregame preparation, the pregame data, kind of like, again, man, it's not all in and everything, but it really kind of helping the player organize their thoughts about what they want to do versus each hitter from the pitching side and kind of giving them this, this foundation, this framework, because We want the brain to have a plan, just like we want the pitcher to have a plan. We want them to be in sync. We want the brain and the body working together. And and ultimately, Jeff, that's what you and I teach. We want the 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 practice to to translate and and transfer into the game. And so the preparation piece, man, whether you know you go super deep with your scouting report or you just really give each player based off of their pitches, based off what they're capable of doing, kind of of an outline of, of kind of the patterns, habits, and tendency of an individual hitter and kind of how we want to approach and attack them, then a lot of times that's enough. So as we transfer and, and get ready for throwing that first pitch of the game and then kind of coming in and what we ought to be looking for in game and, and that's the reality of baseball. And so there's, again, we got three core pieces that we'll work through and then kind of some, some in-between pitches and innings questions that will be part of the handout that, that they can download this week from the pitching side. And so what we want to do is kind of what I call a fact check. And, and again, there's three pieces that we look at. One is the setup. Is, is the setup what we've seen on film or what we scouted about this guy. Has he changed where he's setting up in the box at? And and again, that's just kind of first view, first thought, whether this guy is struggling and he's trying to make some adjustments personally, or whether this guy is really hitting pretty well coming into the game, but now he's made an adjustment where he's set up in the box or how he set up with his hands. Any of those little cues and clues that would initially tell us whether he's made an adjustment based on what he's been doing lately or did he make an adjustment based on me as a pitcher and then the second piece is is really a playoff of Jeff what you teach is kind of that sticks process and I call it the sticks kind of real-time reactions and and we want to we want to know as we as we execute pitches as we throw pitches is he seeing my pitches? Is he reading spin? Is he really, is he seeing it well coming out of my hands? And, and so that kind of ties into that, that seeing the ball, man, are we really telegraphing our pitches? Are we tunneling them pretty well? And are they seeing it? Is he reading spin? The second piece is the on time. 
and again, man, that will be kind of that second cue of whether he's reading the ball well out of my hands or not. Then the third piece is, does he know his own? Is he disciplined? Is he has, did I have an idea as we talked about the last show about, do we know his hot zone and has he expend, uh, expanded it or has he shrunk it? Has he changed it? Has he made it adjustments from where he's at in the box and has it moved his hot zone around? And is he being disciplined with it? Am I being able to get him to chase or is, you know, is he really, again, seeing the ball on time and, and being disciplined within what pitches and what situation and count that he's swinging at, that he's taking, and really giving me an idea of then, okay, once he swings, what kind of swing am I seeing? Is it what we thought? Is it a quick, you know, trust his hand swing? Is it more loopy away? Is, is that showing me what, as a pitcher, and how he's reacting to my pitches, what is that really telling me? And again, man, that's that's the premise that we should be basing our decision making process off of. That's the premise that we should be seeing and reading that hitter in real time and and the catcher and and the pitcher really working together to to make that next decision. And and again, I think as as pitchers practice this more and as we see this happening and how we take it from practice to the game, then I think if this becomes more instinctive. And again, Jeff, the way we teach it and the way we really want to break this down is that we want to take as much emotion out of the game as we can. We want, we want the decision-making process to be more logical because when we do, we handle pressure better. We stay focused about what we're doing in the moment and it don't become about what happened, what didn't happen, and whether I can do it or not. It really does become about what is the absolute best pitch to throw in this situation and count. And that's ultimately what we want. And then the last piece of that is what kind of reactions am I seeing? Am I seeing him flinch? Am I seeing an emotional reaction? Am I seeing something that he didn't expect? <clears throat> Excuse me. Or am I seeing something that, that would show me that this guy is making real-time adjustments? Like, I'm not fooling him at all. Like, he's not, you know, whatever he's game planned against me, like, is real. Like, he's seeing it. And so that's the kind of the, the initial adjustments and or the initial assessments I want to see in real time. Is he seeing my pitches? Is he reading spin? Is he on time? It, does he know his own? Has he expanded his own? Has he shrunk it? Is he being disciplined? What kind of swing am I seeing when he's swinging at pitches? And then, okay, what kind of reactions I'm having? And then the last piece is really what we call the overall fact check. Is he making in-game adjustments? Like, is he adjusting from the first bat to the second bat? Is he adjusting from the first pitch of the first bat, did what he did the first pitch of the second bat? And then kind of, again, the gauge that we set up our pregame data and information and plan around was, what is he doing in certain situations and counts? Does he really know me? Is he, is he know my patterns, habits, and tendencies? And am I pitching to those patterns, habits, and tendencies that day? And again, that's one of those self-awareness things that, that as a pitcher, we got to have. And, and that don't mean that my patterns, habits, and tendencies are bad. It might be the, the absolute best pitch for me to throw in that situation and count is a pitch that I consistently throw in that situation and count. But we also got to know that, that within that, that mindset, within that, that plan, that that is where predictability comes in. And again, a lot of times we can we can overemphasize predictability based on that we think that they're seeing my pitches and timing it up. And the reality of it is they're not. We just kind of convinced ourselves because I've thrown that pitch three times in a row or I threw that pitch the last three hitters when it was one, two, that that I shouldn't throw that pitch again. And that's not true. We got to pitch the game based on that situation account. And, and honestly, what is the absolute best pitch that we could throw? And if it's that pitch that you've thrown the last three hitters one, two, then throw it because that's baseball. That's how we play. And that's part of that decision-making process. So, again, we don't want to become so predictable if he's seeing my pitches is on time and is, and is really disciplined. Then that's the time that we want to start thinking about making a change based on that situation and count and based on maybe what my patterns, habits, and tendencies that he's game plan to. But apart from that, then that, that's the game, man. That's what we see. And so 
that kind of as we walk through the negative counts, what's he doing? It's a positive counts. Is is he consistent to what we've seen pregame? The neutral counts, the type of pitches that he hit the type of pitches that he's swinging at, the type of pitches that he's taking. Is it is it kind of matching up what we've seen pregame, or has he really made some adjustments to me pitching? And I think that's a cool thing about baseball, man. That That's the reality of every game. That's why we love it. That's why every game, is, there's a lot of similarities to every game when, when two teams that know each other and two uh, a pitcher and a hitter that, that are facing each other Several times they know each other pretty well, but that game within the game, that adjustment piece is what makes baseball so cool. And so the last three, the last three things I got is kind of the in-between pitches or in-between innings kind of questions and, and thoughts that we want to see and be aware of as pitchers. One, are his patterns, habits, and tendencies matching his pregame data? Again, it's kind of what we've been talking about today. What are we seeing in real time versus what we pre, what we game plan versus uh, against? And and is it true? Is he made adjustments? And if so, what kind of adjustments? And is there certain situation and counts that he's making that adjustment? And then, are you seeing real time adjustments made by that hitter pitch to pitch? And a bat to a bat. And that's kind of, again, man, it's that awareness piece that we want to we wanna be aware that if he's making an adjustment pitch to pitch or a bat to a bat, that, that we really do see it and that we're aware of it. And, again, it might not change our plan, but it's just, a, it's just that awareness piece that we want to have. And, and then the third question is, do you need to make a real-time adjustment for that hitter, for the umpire? Is that umpire's strike zone moving around? And do I need to make some adjustments based on what I'm seeing out of the umpire, whether he's expanding his zone or he's shrieking his zone? And we can be frustrated emotionally as we want. The reality of it is we got to pitch that umpire. And so we got to be focused enough and we got to, you know, we got to believe in ourselves enough in our pitches that we can make them adjustments. And then the environment has some of the environment change, has the sun changed, has the wind blowing, has it switched from different directions? Is there certain things that are happening beyond your control that that are environmentally that you need to make an adjustment to. And so that's kind of kind of the the real game kind of data inputs, kind of the output thing. What are we seeing? And then kind of the reality of baseball. And and that's the piece when it comes from just like the reality of what we want to do thought process wise from just kind of like what we take away from what's really happening that kind of lays out from the pitching side, what I work with these guys around. And again, man, it's cool when we start having these conversations because it drives the post-game conversation, the post-game evaluation. When we kind of review what happened when they see it through these contexts, it really does let us know when we've watched it or we see the film and we see where we see hitters making adjustments and the pitcher's seen it, man, that's cool. Now we know that these guys are really starting to get it. They're starting to get what, you know, what they're capable of doing. They're seeing the things they should be seeing. And, and again, man, that's the foundation of becoming a really good pitcher and a really good baseball player. Yeah, for sure. And this is fun, man. In the last episode, we talked about the pregame data preparation, which allows us to kind of think through and really organize our thoughts as to what we want to do against the pitcher based on what he's able to do and based on what I'm able to do. And really, we just need a plan, man. We need our brain and we need our approach and we need our body working together. And like you said, we can go super deep with the the pregame data preparation. But really, like we mentioned in that last episode, if I understand the pitcher's PV, what Daryl calls the PVML, and that's the P being the pitcher, what pitcher do they throw? And then the B being velocity, what velocity range do they throw those pitchers at? And then the movement, the M being the movement, L being location. So how hit pitches move to a certain location? What are their patterns, habits, and tendencies? What's their go-to pitch? What's their out pitch? You know, what do they do in their heads? You know, a lot of times that's enough information for us to kind of get going. It just gives us, this gives them something to work with as they enter the game. And now how they watch the game and see if it matches or if the pitcher's made adjustments. 
But just like just like on the pitching side, we have the the three core pieces that we will work through, and then the in between innings and in between pitches, uh, in between pitches questions. So again, like Daryl said, on we're starting off with the setup too, man. These setup like we saw on film or like we saw in his scouting, um, this particular pitcher. Has he changed where he's set up on the rubber? If it matches, it's great. If it doesn't, why? Is he struggling to make certain pitches? Is he struggling to locate certain pitches, to, to make certain pitches, do the movement he wants? What's the adjustment he made on the rubber? And if there is some, what about certain pitches that he's throwing? Uh, there, there, or is this like some type of an adjustment that he made against me? You know, is he still telegraphing his pitches? You know, a lot of times we can see on video, you know, how these guys are set up, where their glove is, where their feet are, and we can kind of get an idea of if they're tipping their pitches or not. And now we get an opportunity when they're warming up to see, is this really, am I seeing what I'm seeing on video? And so then we have that, that's the setup piece. And then we get into like the, the, the real time reaction piece. And, and, you know, we're telling our guys to watch the pitchers when they warm up. You know, see if their tempo changes when they throw certain pitches. Is there a, a difference in this leg kick? Um, as weird as this sounds, you know, and it's something that you can see, but man, you can feel it too. So is there, is there a, a different release window for the different pitches? Does his arm speed slow down on certain pitches? You know, and as we continue to watch the game and studying what the pitcher is doing, is there, you know, tendency that he has against certain, certain situations that count? Is there certain situations that count that scare him? Is he afraid to throw, to throw certain pitches? Is he afraid to throw to certain locations, certain hitters, certain situations? You know, is he showing signs of um, comfort on the mound? You know, reading his body language. Is, is he confident or is, is he struggling? You know, and if you're watching, if you're watching the game, you can sense this and you can, you can feel this. And again, like, like Daryl said earlier, man, when we see the game this way and when we prepare and talk this way, uh, these things kind of become ins- instinctive. And so, we are now, you know, being logical with our approach and what we're trying to do in that very moment rather than, you know, wondering, you know, what happened or what didn't happen or whether I'm capable of doing such. And then and then the last piece is, is whether he's making adjustments. You know, did he make an adjustment to me from that first at bat to that second at bat? And then what is this based off of? Is it based off certain situation account? Is it based off what I did, what he read? What's that based off of? And if, if he did, if he does, if he does not make the adjustment and falls into the, the same hatter, you know, habit pattern tendencies, or is it off of my pattern habit tendencies? Right, so this is the awareness, Pete, that we keep talking about. Understanding what your your hatter, pattern, habit patterns and tendencies are. You know, here at Athletic Mission, when we do our command hitting, I know all of our guys' habits, patterns, and tendencies, and we create game like situation with pressure, and it it's not. Um, it's not until like the end of the session, when the session's over, when we talk about what they did, did they get awareness as to what I was doing to them? And it was based off what I knew about them and based off what I was seeing them doing. But then, you know, as they start doing this enough, then you start to see them, you know, really watching and really paying attention and start making adjustments. So this is the awareness that we're making in real time and making these real time adjustments as, as needed. Then we're looking at the, the, the counts, you know, the negative count, the positive count, the neutral count is, is what he doing uh, consistent with what we see in the pregame, you know, what he throws in certain counts. Uh, what he throws in certain locations, you know, in, uh, 
is the is he feeling his pitches today? Like is he still throwing it? Even though he's not feeling it, is it because coach is calling it or because he's trying to find it? What's making it? You know, what's his pitch today? Is his his good pitch today, man, is it moving like that extra half an inch? I mean, what are his pitches for today? What do they look like? And then this leads uh, to the, the in-between innings, the in-between pitches. You know, for us, we want to assess ourselves, and we want to assess ourselves assess ourselves in the in the sixth process. So am I seeing the ball? Am I seeing spin? Am I on time? And am I being disciplined and waiting for a pitch that I know that I can execute in this situation account based off what I can do? You know, is the pitcher is his habit pattern habit patterns and tendencies matching the pregame data that we saw in our preparation based on video, what we remembered, or the scouting report? Are what we seen in real time versus what we game plan? Like is is the matching? Is it true or were there adjustments made? And what were those adjustments? Then are we seeing the the pitcher make adjustment pitch by pitch or bat by bat? Is is, is he reading me? Is he messing with my head? You know, this is the awareness piece. Now, this may again, this may not change our plan, but it is something we want to be aware of as to what he's seeing when he's pitching to us. And then next, uh, do we need to make any you know any real adjustments against the pitcher um, based on what he's doing that day? You know, like I said earlier, maybe his pitches are moving like really good today. Maybe it's moving that extra half an inch, or what is it? It did. Um, is it the environment? Like, is the wind blowing hard from left to right? Is it blowing straight in? Is it a cloudy day making it harder to see the ball? Is there no batter's eye making it tough to see spin and rotation of the baseball? I mean, these things are outside of our control, but it's still adjustments that we need to make. So, yeah, man, this, I mean, this is the real time data process that we go through, the thought process wise. And as to what we want to take away as to what's happening. And this is fun, you know, like, like Daryl said, this drives our, our post game evaluation. And now we can talk about the adjustment that we did or didn't make. And over time, you see this conversation get better as they learn to take the pregame information and, 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 stick to it or learn to see a game in a way that they were going to make adjustments, you know, see the game in a way that they're going to try and get a strategic advantage over their opponent. These are real conversations. And, uh, you know, it, it, it's fun because it's not them just coming in and pointing to mechanics all day long. Absolutely, man. And I think too, man, I want these, I want the listeners to take away, especially coaches and and players and parents when you hear that that we walk through all this data i promise you when you see the game the right way it's not overload it's not overwhelmed it is the game of baseball it is the way it's played and it's the way you know good players see the game and so it's not something you're born with it's got to be something that that we train you know, we really do develop their mindset to practice this the right way. And we literally do that every day here, that when we're training guys, we want them to understand that this this is the things that you need to take away from practice is maybe what you really are practicing on your skill set. But when it goes to the game, like you got to be able to see this from a pitcher. You got to be able to see this from a hitter. We got to be able to have the awareness that that is just the way the game is played at a high level is that we see these things. And when we start training guys and really reminding them and making that a, a, a focus in practice, then it don't feel overwhelming at all. It just naturally becomes like their swing or just like the way they would throw a curveball or a slider or a changeup. It just becomes part of the game. And so that self-awareness, man, is more than just this woo-woo kind of thing. No, it's real. It's legit. And it's self-awareness about what's going on around me and how that's going to impact my decision-making process about what I'm about to do. And, and again, I think the more 
that young players understand this, then the easier the game comes, the easier that they see the things that happen and it, and they don't get uh, super focused on talent and ability as they're developing and maturing as a, as a physical player, as their physical skills develop, they see the game strategically. And then what's cool about it is now as they really start to mature physically, then dude, their game just takes off. They really become, you know, a really good player. And everybody's kind of like, well, where did they come from? Hey man, this kid, this kid had been practicing the mindset and the strategy piece for a long time. He just kind of been a late bloomer physically. So he, he was playing the game the right way. He was seeing the game the right way. Now he's just able to physically do more things and, and to be more in command of his pitches. And he's able to consistently execute those pitches. And now you're seeing the, the fruition of all his hard work and his mindset being right, his, his practice habits and, and really mastering his skills and how he uses that to create a strategy on game day. And, and that's the cool thing about this, man. Like when you learn the game from this perspective, then even if you're not physically where you want to be at and you're still working and growing there, that you can learn this, this mindset and this strategy piece. And, and then when they all kind of come together, man, it, you, you can really play the game at a high level. Yeah, that's good, man. And my takeaway is going to be just making sure that everybody understands that the game of baseball played in real time. You can't develop a plan and then not make adjustments based on what's happening in real time and what you're seeing. So having a plan, a game plan, get your mind and your body working together. Then it gets you to watch the game in a way that you need to be watching the game so that you can make the adjustments that are needed. And and there you you're not too young to do this. Hitters and pitchers across all ages need a game plan. You're not too young to learn this. You're not too young to watch a game like this. So let's get on the game planning. Let's start watch let's teach these guys how to play some baseball. Absolutely, man. That's good. Awesome, Daryl man. Good show. So Again, guys, if you guys are seeing any value in these episodes, please go leave us an objective review and then uh, then head over to strategic-baseball.com and join our mailing list. We send an email out every Friday as we release a new episode. So get on there and uh, we will catch you all next week.